find my joy, my, my bliss in the musical workings of Chopin. I wasn't always completely mesmerized by this. Or taken into complete reverie with this. Musical craftsmanship on full display. Are you looking for genius? Here it is. It's a polonaise that fused together into a fantasy. I mean, who, who, who does such things? The polonaise, with its strict adherence to rhythm and harmony, you know, no merged into the unpredictable extreme dynamics tempo and whims of fantasy form you can't you can't such extremes such extremes will confuse the listener this this is not this is not found in any existing musical literature no it can't be done no 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 it can't anything could happen at any time Madness! It's unpredictable into the predictable. It's just, it's just like life. It's just like my life, actually. Just my life. And here it comes. End. Pure fucking genius on display. I'm not jealous of Chopin. If anything, I'll never come anything close to being him. I mean, yeah, I thought I could. I was told I might. But I was just... I was just hoping to be the very, very, very best Joey Cristino. The very best. I thought I could be that. Yeah. Maestro Cristino. Maestro Giuseppe Cristino. Bravo, maestro. Bravo. Bravissimo. Bravissimo. Bullshitto. Bullshitto. I was fascinated by the classical musical world from when I was a very small child. My family, they would, uh, they would take me to concerts and I would just be glued to the music that was happening on stage. But my family would always talk. They just chatter, 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 chatter throughout the entire performance. And I'd get angry at them. I'd get upset. And I would say something and they'd laugh at me. And they would say, Joey, you're too sensitive. Joey, stop being so serious. But I was serious. I loved the music. Why didn't they listen to the music the same way that I did? You know, I felt I had taken a stupidity pill. But as I got older, I, I realized I wasn't that much different from everyone else. I mean, sure, I heard music differently, but... 
I still needed the same thing as any other person. I needed food, I needed shelter, and I needed to find love and companionship. And so I had to find my way out in the dating world. Find my way up there. Believe me, I tried dating. I tried very hard. I thought if I could just find the right woman, if I could just share my life with someone who found the arts and culture and theater as exhilarating as I do, as I did, I... Look, I was looking for someone to share this mess of a life with. And I thought I could find someone, but... Trust me, there were plenty of women out there who were way worse messes than me. Like Alyssa, the dancer. Alyssa was, oh, how could I put it? A ravishing beauty with brains, all tangled in a knot. Joey, I am so excited to show you what I've been working on for the past two months. Um, I've been studying with this master teacher and he is going to change the landscape of contemporary. He is just, well, the work will speak for itself, okay? So, I'm so excited. Just, just sit back and relax, okay? Enjoy. Here we go. You're looking at me. You're looking at me. Don't you look at me! Don't you look at me! No, I, uh, I have to say that is just mind blowing, you know, like now you see how he's going to change the landscape of contemporary dance. I mean, I have want to show you this. No, stop it. Sit there. I want to show you this thing I've been working on. It's this new artistic concept that I have been working on for months now. And I just, I really want you to be my first audience because the audience viewing and experience is what really makes my art just so captivating and unique. <laughs> but you already knew that. Anyway, sit down. We're going to start. Fasten your seatbelts, buddy, because this one's gonna be wild. All right, so I'm gonna get over here. Ready? Oh, wait, I'm adding sound and music to this too because why not set the mood a little? <laughs> All right, let's get going. Whew. 
Oh. Organic banana. Representative of a life force. Let me just. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. And that, oh, oh, it's supposed to just stick. You represent a, a decaying society of waste and consumerism. And just, with every layer we peel back, we just consume more. And then, as the performance progresses, I just layer on more and more. And the bananas come like, like rapid fire machine guns, just smashing into the canvas and sticking until we reach our end. <sighs> Pretty unique, huh? What do you think? I think the audience is really gonna just have the most amazing experience that's gonna change their life. Yeah? Huh. Yeah, she was unique, all right. I mean, what was that? The emasculation proclamation? I don't know what I saw in her. No, wait. Yes, I do. It was the best sex I ever had. But she was completely bonkers. Organic. And then there was my jewel of an actress, Francine. And believe it or not, this one had the most promise. What a roller coaster ride. But it was exciting. You know, for a while, I thought she was the one, you know, the answer. But then, of course, the bubble bursts, and she. Well, actually, I blew it. Okay, Joy, I just want to perform this monologue that I've been working on for a long time. So please just sit back and don't talk. Just watch it. Watch me. Okay? 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 Okay. I feel super, super ready. I'm excited. Okay. I just need to get really in the zone and I need to have an audience in front of me. Okay? So please just watch it. I need to get that vibe. Okay, okay, okay. Ready, ready, ready. Yeah, here's a spot. I'll dance part. How would I say? One, two, go, my lord. Five, my lord, five. My lord, no, 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 I need to start again, yes, yes, I need to start again, don't talk, yeah, just let me start again, okay, okay. You see, what happened with Francine was, she was doing a production of Macbeth, playing Lady Macbeth, and she's a very committed actress. She really wants to immerse herself as best as possible. No, 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 no. I just, I just don't feel that, you know, I'm in the zone. I don't know why. But I'm your favorite actress, right? I'm your favorite actress, Joy. I'm your favorite actress, right? Joy! Why didn't you answer me? Joy! Joy!
Why didn't you answer me? Why I can't use this agony just, just to get really in the flow of my character? Okay. Okay, I think, I really feel, think that I can use it. Yes, I can use it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the spot. Oh, dance spot. How would I say? Go, my lord. One day she was lamenting on the fact that she could never really clean actual blood off her hands after the scene when she helps murder King Duncan. And I volunteered to donate some of my blood to the production so that she could have that moment and it could fuel her performance because I wanted to be a very loving partner. And she loved it. The problem was... The show was going up five days a week, uh, two shows a day, and then Saturday, Sunday, it was doing three shows a day. So I wound up donating about four and a half pints of my blood, which was a problem because I was passing out frequently. I passed out once in the middle of a concert. <laughs> and... um I said, hey, I can't really give my blood anymore, even though I promised, I had promised. And she said that I wasn't committed to her passions. And so there we are. And it was at that point that I realized that maybe I shouldn't be dating women artists because they're all a little, a little too much about their passions, let's just say. And hey, I'm not any better. I'm not any better, but I only have so much blood, you know? Too bad, too bad, too bad. What done cannot be undone. Too bad, too bad, too bad. But she was right, in a way. I mean, she was very much focusing on her art, and I was focusing too much on love. So it was time for me to really start focusing on my art and my career, and making that number one for a bit. But oh boy, did that come with a whole bunch of unfortunate circumstances. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to me today. I have been a fan of yours. Oh, oh, excuse me. I apologize. Oh, I had a duck lorange for lunch and it's, <coughs> it's repeating on me, but I have been a fan of your work for many years. And I know all about classical music, Ella Fitzgerald, Ozzy Osbourne, Conway Twitty, Little Nas X, you name it. I know it. And this job, oh, Oh, I'm sorry, just acid reflux. Um, this job is going to change your life. I know, I, I know, I know you have your doubts, but listen, just hear me out. It's for a rehearsal pianist. Wait, let me finish. For the John Elliott Gardner Mounty Verde Choir. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all I have to do is take this little phone and press these little numbers and get them. Oh, no, no. But me and John, we go way back. We were lovers. Yes, at one time, you know. But he wanted to chase the fame and I wanted to be a housewife. I'm sorry. I also had uh, curry last night and it's just a little spicy. And so, you know, oh. I'm so sorry, but look, I don't want to waste your time. Let me, I'm going to get John on the phone right now, and he'll do anything for me. John, he's still in love with me, you know. He, he he'll do anything for me if I say, you know, John, what 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 I want is this, and he'll just be like, "Sky's the limit, baby," because 
That's how much he loves me. I'm, I'm going to get him on the phone. This is how I'm going to be taken care of. This is going to change your life. Just watch. Wait a minute. It's ringing. Oh. Oh, my God. I apologize. Oh. I can't breathe. It's ringing. Hold on. John. Joey, as always, it's a pleasure running into you. And like I said, you're going to be a hit. All I got to do is write that letter of recommendation and you're in. The orchestra has been needing a rehearsal pianist and you, my friend, are the man for the job. I know they're going to love you. So anyway, Joey, it's been a pleasure. And uh, here's the great things. See you later, Joey. And so another opportunity disappeared with a bang. But that didn't stop me. No. I figured I'd give my hand and see if I could make a go at university education. Yeah. Mr. Cristino. Mm, Mr. Cristino. Oh, Joey. Can I call you Joey? Can I call you Joey? I'm going to call you Joey, okay? Because you have touched the, the inner child. I'm, I'm verklempt. I, I've, I've never heard anything like that. The, the playing. Oh, my God. The talent. My daughter has talent. But, oh, my goodness. The talent that you have. I've never heard such talent. And you're just an amazing interviewer. I literally, I want to offer you the... <laughs> One second, okay. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, it's HR. One second. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, thanks. Mr. Christina, we have found somebody younger, prettier, and who will work for less money than you to take the job, but thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, though, I guess. But good luck, and I uh, hope to, to see you out there. <laughs> All right, class, find your seats. Find your seats. Good. Welcome. My name is Professor Joey, and I think I'm going to skip attendance because every seat in this classroom appears to be full. So thank you so much for signing up. Welcome to Music Theory 101. Now, William Shakespeare said that music is the food of love and he couldn't be any more correct. It's amazing. It's this invisible force that we can't see and we can't really touch, but we can feel in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. And it just brings us together to do amazing things. Every single human on this planet loves music. Whether you're the most powerful dictator or the lowliest dog walker, whether you're into sophisticated symphonies or metalhead moshers, Everyone finds togetherness and love in music, and they also find parts of themselves. A lot of people say that university education isn't about letting people find themselves. It's about making workers and just pretty much making degrees in a paper mill. But this class is going to be different. In this class, every single person is going to find out a piece of themselves. Because William Shakespeare said, if music is the food of love, then... Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Cristino. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, you're no longer needed right now uh, for this course. Because uh, we're not offering this course oh. anymore. Um, um, so we won't need, be needing you to teach it. Sorry. Right. Um, if, if music is the food of love, then go home. Class dismissed. I was just fooling myself. There was nothing out there that was going to fulfill me. 
All right, nothing out there at all. I was just chasing nothing. But except, you know, just maybe there was something, and it was. When I was eight, I saw an old man playing the piano. And the music had touched me in a way that it had never really touched me before. It melted into me. It, it fused with my soul. And it, it just became something that I had never understood. But I saw everything in that one moment, and life just wasn't a prison. It was... It was pure bliss, and it was Chopin's Polonaise fantasy. Yes, that one. I, I've never really been able to be touched by anything else like that. I've, I've just constantly been chasing that high of that one moment, of that one moment where I found perfect bliss and freedom and complexity Everything in life was just okay. I didn't have to try to be, I just was. I didn't have to, I didn't have to find myself in other people. I didn't have to find myself in my work or career. I was just found. I was just found in the music of Chopin. And that was okay. And now, now I'm content. Or, or so at least I tell myself. <laughs>